Hi, I'm Michael Bulbenko from Fujifilm. Welcome back. We're going to go deeper into the video characteristics of the X-T2 camera and how to squeeze the most out of it. So if you remember from one of our earlier videos, we explained you can have the camera record directly onto the SD card using one of the onboard film simulations like Valdia or Astia. And that is going to be recorded in what's known as the Rec. 709 color space. You can also record that same Rec. 709 output through the HDMI port to an external recorder. However, one of the best things about the Fuji X-T2 is that we introduce something known as Fuji Log. One thing to be careful of is that you don't refer to log as raw. They're two different things. Raw in video is just like raw on a still image. You can't actually see it. It's just a bunch of numbers. F-Log was carefully developed by our color scientist to go into a very, very large color space and have the dynamic range of the sensor output maximized as best as it could. And one of the ways they do it is by using a log encoding. Log stands for logarithmic, and it's a curve. And this better distributes the values between black and white in a way that's more similar to the way our eye works. The difference is, is that log is in what's called scene referred color. So those code values of the way the data is expressed uh, more accurately represent what was out there in the real world. Whereas Rec. 709 and sRGB, those color spaces that we use on TVs and monitors are display referred color and they're limited to whatever our display is capable of. It's locked in. You can only get it so bright, you can only get it so dark and there's only so many colors that it can represent. Uh, grading is basically post-production uh, post color correction uh, and exposure corrections. Now, it can be done for creative purposes, like this scene here of this gentleman working on a sculpture. Is he sitting in his kitchen at night by the warm, toasty glow of a tungsten lamp? Or is he sitting by the window on a chilly February morning? Most photographers probably own one of these. And these are really great. They've been around a long time. Uh, they're of no value really for video and cinema color correction. They were designed for ex uh, exploring the color characteristics of your camera, such as the different film simul simulations in the X series. Best of all, though, would be to use a chart specifically designed for digital cinema and video. And you'll see when I show you the scopes in the software just how this particular arrangement comes to your rescue. And what you see here is the color correction screen of what's probably the world's most popular of the color grading applications in the market. However, it's more than likely more than what most of you have in mind. Uh, let's instead take a look at the color correction tools that are built right into my editing software. Notice on the screen here is one of the scopes that I had mentioned earlier. This one in particular is called the waveform. There are also the vector scope and the histogram we're all familiar with, but the waveform is the most useful in doing color correction. And this particular view is called the Luma view, but you can also do the RGB parade, which very, very helpfully splits the image down into the red, green, and blue channels separately. However, for now we're going to look at the Luma because it enables us to most easily evaluate blacks, grays, and whites. Now notice the waveform, unlike the histogram, actually reads the picture from left to right. So over here, this is actually that green tree back there and the blue sky. And here you can clearly see the different steps and chips of the various charts that I've got in the middle of the frame. Notice that the uh, Fuji log shows details in the whites that go past 100%. So that's represented by this white here and this white there on the charts. But the important thing is that the white values exceed at 100%, and that gives us something to work with. Looking at the 709, however, 
you'll see that everything is clipped at 100%. Nothing in 709 is allowed to exceed 100%. And also visually, you'll see that the gray patch here is basically blended in with the white down here below it. Certainly different from the uh, Fuji log, where you can clearly see a separation here. So at three stops over, I can still save the picture that is in Fuji log, whereas I'm pretty much hosed with the 709. So here's the 709, and we go into the uh, color corrector, and we take a look, and no matter what I do with the highlight slider to bring it down, or with the midtone slider to try to get these two patches to actually sh uh, separate and show that they're not the same, I can't save it. There's nothing I can do to get those patches to be the same. Yet, if I go to the uh, Fuji log, do the same thing. If I turn on a color corrector, I have lots of room to maneuver my midtones up and down and the shadows and get everything to look completely normal. Looking at the underexposure, here is Fuji log. This is 3200 two stops under. And this is Rec. 709 3200 at two stops under. Look closely into the background. This was shot in a garage. And you can see how the Fuji log still has detail back there. But the 709, basically you've got nothing to work with. At least I can do something with this. Whereas in the 709, I probably don't want to use that. So let's move on to something a little more sophisticated now, which is uh, more of a creative type thing and how to match cameras. Notice here my subject is holding up the test chart in a way that camera one can see it, and then he turns it for camera two to see it. So camera one was recording in uh, Fuji Log. Camera two was recording in Rec. 709. So the best way to understand what the chart is actually showing us is to crop down to that part of the image. And now you can see uh, that the only part of the thing that the software is seeing is the chart itself. And now we very clearly see how the black, gray, and white chips are represented here on the left, and all the other ones are spread out across there. Again, if I go to the RGB, you can see how that's broken down to three different channels. These two images have not been color corrected, so you can see the difference between them. So if I uh, go back to the normal view by turning the crop off, and we can now look at the color corrections. So going into the Fuji log, if I apply a color correction, you can see I can make it look basically very much like the Rec. 709 coming out of it. And do a little more tweaking to get them to match exactly. And so let's take a look at what I did to this to make the uh, camera A look a good deal like the camera B. I can do a little more tweaking, but what I had to do was go in and add a lot of saturation, first of all, and then the exposure, I just basically needed to make it more contrasty. So the easy way is bump up the highlights drop the shadows down a bit and move the midtones quite a bit. Now you can see I get it almost exactly like the 709. If I go in actually and do a slight adjustment on the 709, I can get both of those cameras looking almost identical. Let's take a look at some real world footage of a car on a racetrack. So here you see the car coming down the track. On the top I have the Rec. 709, underneath I have the Fuji Log version of it. And you can clearly see there's a big difference in saturation and contrast primarily. But it should be a fairly easy fix. Okay, so looking at the 709 as a reference, we see that the blacks are about down here. The gray is sitting somewhere around 40 IRE. So if we turn that off and go to the uh, F-Log, all I need to do is go into the color corrector. I'll start with exposure, and the first thing I'm going to do is bring the grays down to about that 40 IRE. We're going to drop the uh, shadows down to about where they were. I think we need to bring up the highlights a little bit. So now we just see that uh, contrast-wise, uh, this looks very close, right? So the difference right now is color. So we come back in here. We're going to 
give the color a little overall magenta, a little overall red, just a hint, uh, about 1%. And the saturation, we're going to bump way up. And now if we toggle back and forth between the Rec. 709 and the F-Log, you can see it's almost there without too much trouble. But what if you just want to get your files to the editor so the editor can start cutting on it and you're going to do your major color correction later? That's where you can use LUTs to quickly transform the color directly into 709 and get them out the door for the editor to start working. LUT stands for lookup table. And all it is is a simple, fast, pre-calculated set of values to transform color from one space to another. That's all it does. And we've created two different LUTs that give you uh, two different looks to take the Fuji log directly into Rec. 709. Thanks for joining me on this crash course on color correction and how to get the most out of your X-T2 camera.